Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner, available for code reviews and on-site training. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to discuss changes coming in C23 that affect C++ programmers. I'd like to go ahead and take the opportunity to remind you that you are largely in control of what we talk about on this channel and my fill in the blank programmer channel. And that is driven from my Lepticus slash CPP weekly issue tracker on GitHub. Uh, you can submit episode ideas. You can thumbs up or if you really want to thumbs down episode ideas that you would like to see or I guess not see on the channel. And that brings us to today. We're on the C23 changes that affect C++ programmers. I would also just like to remind you uh, that I have published a variety of puzzle books and a best practices book for C++ and you can check the video description below for links for ebook and print book versions. Okay, so we're going to talk about these C23 changes that affect C++ programmers. Now, by effect, I'm largely talking about interoperability between the two languages, but I'm going to start with a big hitting one, but I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about it because I have another episode planned that's just about this one particular feature coming in C23. And that is bound embed. Now, the compiler that I currently have configured on Compiler Explorer here doesn't give me the ability to actually use this particular feature but you basically can do something like this and it is going to literally embed that text right here inside your file and this is going to be used more for creating byte arrays and strings of data that you then want to process at compile time in some way it will be used for embedded scripting and it will be used for all kinds of embedded resources. Now, I know that there are two camps of people. There's the camp that says, there's no reason we need this because there are other ways to do it. And there is the camp of people who says, this is exactly what I've been waiting for for the last 30 years since I started programming in C. I'm more in the second camp because I know the failures of trying to do this in other ways that involve like doing a pound include of a file that happens to have a character string in it or something like that. It doesn't work like you want it to. Pound embed will get us there. So why does that affect C++ programmers? Well, if you have a conformant C23 compiler, then you will probably have access to this in C++23, but there's no guarantees there. It's possible that your compiler vendor will say, sorry, that's not technically a C++ feature, so I'm going to forbid you from using it. But let's hope not. Okay, like I said, I'm going to do a more in-depth episode about that in the future. So let's move on to the other things. Next on the docket is Constexpr. This is kind of a big deal, uh, but not as big of a deal as we would like for it to be. So C23 is going to give us constexpr for variables, but not constexpr for functions. So I can't do something like this because that's a function, but I can do this. So I can have constex for values. Now, this is going to help with cross language compatibility. If I have a header file that I want to be includable from C and C++, I can do this kind of value in a header file in C23. The next one is attributes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch my compiler here. I haven't actually tested this, but we're going to try doing this in actual C mode in C23. 
Okay, so our compiler does not yet support this. So we're going to go ahead and just add some comments and we'll see along the way what our Clang trunk actually does support. So number three is attributes. And again, this really helps in the case that we want to have a header file that can be included from our C compiler and our C++ compiler. I personally think that this is going to be very helpful when we talk about no discard. Now, this is a great one for telling the compiler that throwing away this value should result in a warning, or if you have warnings as errors enabled, then an actual error. So we're gonna get a handful of attributes from C++ currently in C23. Now I'm focusing on the things that are gonna affect C++ developers, and I see that as mostly header files again. But just so you know, you will also get the deprecated fall through, may be unused, and no return attributes. And if you are a fan of this channel, then you are already familiar with at least fall through, may be unused, and no discard. I don't believe I've ever covered no return and deprecated. But if you would like to see episodes about that, then be sure to go on my GitHub and add issues for that so that they become ideas that are tracked for future episodes. Okay, number four. Unnamed parameters in function definitions. Now, sometimes you need to meet a certain interface and you just don't have a reason to name a parameter. Now, in modern C++, there's two different ways of dealing with this. Uh, we might have something like this, but if we have warnings enabled, uh, then we should get an unused parameter warning, which we are getting here. So in modern C++, we might mark this as maybe unused, which is now going to be allowed in C23 since we have attributes, or we might choose to simply not give this parameter a name and that will also be allowed in C23. So again, helps with interoperability between the languages. Now, number five is typed enumerations. Uh, since C++11, we have been allowed to specify the underlying type for an enumeration. And it would look something like this. It kind of looks like you're actually inheriting from an integer here and you can give these things values. Now, before C23, this wasn't possible. But with C23, you can specify the underlying representation of an enumeration. Now, this is actually kind of important, largely for interoperability between C and C++, but also uh, because technically, uh, the two values here in my enum are 0 and 1, which means that the standard, at least the C++ standard, and I believe this is correct for the C standard as well, requires that the underlying type of enum, my enum here, be at least one bit. It makes no other requirements on it. So if we were to specify that this is in fact an integer or perhaps it has an underlying type of car, then we can specify the actual size here. That's pretty cool. Now, the final thing that I want to mention is the has include. So now again, in this shared world of C and C++ header files, we can do, we can do this. We can make a compile time query to see if a file can be included, and then we can do something with that knowledge once we know if that file 
can be found on the file system currently. So all these together really add up to much better interoperability for those shared header files between C and C++ with number one, pound embed, being kind of the killer feature that hopefully we will have access to in C++23 when our compilers become conformant with the C23 standard. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and check out all the links in the video description.